To those attending MCC Boston through any of our social media platforms, you too can participate by going to our website at mccboston.org and clicking on the donate button there for that purpose. Thank you for being a part of our church family. Members and friends of MCC Boston, I'm so glad for the greater acceptance our communities experience today, for the ongoing dismantling of laws meant to stigmatize our existence, and for the ways our experience as queer people can be useful in serving and enriching others. And while we're not yet at a point of full equality, I am optimistic that one day that will eventually come. If you pay attention, we can see attempts every day to portray oneself or one's group as an underdog, even when it's completely and patently untrue. White straight men on the internet love writing op-eds claiming that they're the most oppressed group in the world today. The very wealthy who keep the poor in chains appear as talking heads telling us all how they're being taken advantage of by a class of moochers and takers, poor babies. Evangelical Christians love to repeat verses about being persecuted for the sake of their faith because despite the near complete political and economic control of this country, they feel that being asked to treat others as equal is akin to being fed to lions. And of course, we can never ever manage to make it through February without hearing at least one cry of, why isn't there a white history month? And to be fair, it would be hypocritical of me to leave all of these examples so squarely in the realm of the right-wing persecution complex. We on the left struggle the same. If you've ever heard the term oppression Olympics, you know what I mean. Often we feel like in order to defend your rights, you must pit your struggle against that of others. In worst case scenarios, this means that a more privileged group will further shame and stigmatize a less privileged group. For instance, Though we certainly all believe in feminism and the equality of women, we must acknowledge that some feminist movements have become the oppressor themselves by refusing to acknowledge and support their trans sisters. Or we may look at the many occasions in which queer white people perpetuate harmful stereotypes that people of color are overwhelmingly homophobic, further stigmatizing people of color and completely overlooking our queer sisters, brothers, and siblings of color. All I mean is that we too tend to center our own oppression at the risk of sometime aligning ourselves with the oppressor. Perhaps instead of focusing on increasing our own suffering in hopes of a greater reward, we can hope to increase the rewards of others who suffer in this world. Perhaps we no longer wait to fill the hungry, lift up those who are spoken down to, give the poor their rightful inheritance, and cause those who mourn to laugh. Perhaps Luke's prediction of this reversal of fortune doesn't ask us to consider where we are on the scale of suffering at all, but rather asks us to see the ways in which we are doing well, in which others are in need of help and care. And as I said, I'm not going to take the easy way out here and guarantee you that the answer isn't to sell all your possessions, and I'm not sure at all if that's what I'm supposed to be doing, and I just don't want to do it either. But if that's too much for you, and it probably is because it's too much for me, then Consider the suffering of others rather than your own. Focus on bringing about as much of this reversal of fortune as you were able now, instead of waiting to see it in the future. Go out, go forth, feed the hungry, comfort those who mourn, minister to the poor, and do not care what they say about you. Recognize that the power is in you to make these beatitudes and these moments real. Amen.